Okay, so that's the recording um, started now. Uh, so welcome to the very short hour webinar on running online training and events. Just some of the elements that um, we'll cover today is some tips on, on, on running online training and events. So we'll share with you some of the things that we've picked up over the last year of not just running training online but we have run our large annual conference as well so some some tips there and also the platforms that we've used and the advantages and disadvantages of these and then talk about some of the challenges that we have come across as well we'll also ask for your perspective on these elements as well because this is more about peer learning than kind of more learning from us as well it's, a, it's about a combination of everything and please feel free to share any of your experiences as we go along too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop, um, pop you all into kind of groups to have your first discussion, just eight minutes in, the, in this room and two of the things to discuss is what sessions have you been delivering online, so what kind of training have you been delivering and then what have you found is the best platform for these events and this just gives you lets you get an idea of what other organizations are doing in the way of training and you know what what they found kind of the best platform for doing so and then we'll get some feedback uh, so if you just nominate one person in your breakout room to uh, come back and feedback to the group and um also oh we've got tom joined us uh We'll also hear from, I'll do a little bit of a presentation on kind of what we've picked up on delivering online training. Okay, so I will just pause the recording um, just now before I drop the screen. Okay, so that's the recording resumed. So, yep, again, thank you for sharing all your kind of um, platforms that you know you're using for online training events and the type of um, training and stuff you're running online um, but here's just some of the things uh, first of all to consider in terms of online training and you know what we've certainly picked up is knowing who your audience is I mean this is really important when you're doing face-to-face -face training too also important with online training so you know do the um, have additional support needs and that is a maybe a particular challenge to try and adapt your, your resources to meet different needs. And um, thinking about how long your uh, training course or event um, will last. Uh, so is it going to be maybe just an hour block or is it going to be an hour and a half or, or so on? What method of delivery are you going to use? So if you've got maybe more than it, it's more than a one off event, it's maybe a four or five week course that you would have normally done face to face, thinking of how you can adapt that to online. So can you do some live sessions mixed in with some kind of self study homework tasks, which is what we have done with our carbon literacy training for communities, youth workers and um, also our council councils as well so we've worked with Glasgow City Council and the Scottish Borders Council and we're now working with Falkirk Council delivering carbon literacy training so these are the kind of things we use because we would normally have a one or two day session it's now mixed into four four weeks of, of different methods so thinking about those methods and well obviously the platform is important as well so what are the kind of things that you're needing in your training do you want to have a set of breakout rooms where you can bring in interactive discussion, then you can think of that too. And coming back, that's also almost coming back to knowing who your audience is, what support requirements does your participants need? So that's something to ask in the beginning. I know this is probably something you already do anyway, when you're signing people up is asking these um, questions so that you know who's coming and you can start a plan of how to best support them. Promoting your events as well. I mean, this is something that's important with your face-to-face -face, um, sessions as well and online is how you're going to promote and encourage people to join. So we do a lot of our kind of promotion. We'll pop um, the training on our website. We'll do a news story 
and then it's linked to social media, which does encourage people to join. So we, the, the series of webinars that we're doing up to the end of June, they were online for two weeks, uh, two and a half weeks before they were fully booked. And that's a really short period of time to fully book out eight um, different events. Just on the event side of it, so on the back of training, you might have maybe a day's event, maybe your, co your annual conference, for example, uh, just very similar to the training aspect is knowing who your audience is. How long do you want the event to run? So if you normally have an event that's run over a day, then I think the issue and that maybe the challenge we had when we delivered our annual conference is we packed in what we would normally do in a um, in a physical session. We packed it into one day and it was maybe quite challenging to just be in front of a screen for a full day. So what I would suggest is consider, you know, maybe having a couple of half days if that's the case and um, think about, you know, what you can fit into those half days, you know, um, some, some speakers, uh, some breakout sessions, um, Net, do you want networking in the event or, or virtual marketplaces? I'll talk about the platforms for these events as well, um, some, some useful ones that you can use. And then just again, the support requirements are important as well. Not everybody has the same access to technology and might need an ad additional support, maybe like instructions of how to access, how to access and use Zoom or Teams or whatever other platform you're using. So consider maybe drawing up a how-to guide. And obviously for your events cost is, cost is a huge consideration. You know, we were um, over 5,000 to just do um, an, an, online, an online conference over a day. And that's without bringing in food and travel that we would normally have in a conference. And again, just the same thing as the promotion of your events too. And one of the things um, I, mean, I should have mentioned at the start, you know, if you've got any questions on what I go through as well, just pop, um, pop them into the chat. Or even if you want to just um, share your experience as well as we go, then again, pop in, popping that into the, into the chat too. So top tips, uh, you know, I've mentioned that previous slide, you know, considering what platform you will use. So what is it you want your event or, or training to cover? And then your, your platform will need to be considered after that. If your session is longer than an hour and a half, then I'd suggest building in a break. So a, a, short, a short screen break, even a regular short screen break. If you've got a three hour session, then maybe three five minute breaks um, would be useful. Um, incorporating interactive elements. So not just having your session where you're just talking to people, but just bringing in some discussion, breakout rooms. Zoom's great because they've got the polls function on Zoom and scavenger hunts, which um, Gary's done in some of his training, which is um, a really cool way of getting people up and up moving about is, you know what it's like, you're sitting in front of a screen all day, you're maybe not moving. So having, having something like that's always quite, quite useful. And practicing beforehand, so checking your tech works. So logging in maybe 10 minutes before your session starts. And, you know, this is probably not new um, things that I'm saying to you as well. And having a co-trainer too. That's really important. If your tech breaks down, your Wi-Fi suddenly drops out and you basically are popped out the meeting, then having a co-trainer that knows the, the training that can pick that up, but also useful, they can manage the maybe tech side of it in the background. So looking at what's coming into the chat or admitting people as maybe people are late and admitting them as they come in. And that's really useful as it takes that pressure off the presenter as well. So just another couple of things to go through before um, we pop you into the next breakout room to talk about some challenges. But just wanted to go through the advantages and disadvantages of some of the online platforms that we've been using. So Zoom, um, well, you're all familiar with Zoom, given that first, um, first discussion. The advantage is that they have so many different features that you can use to ensure that it's as interactive as possible. It's very easy to use and access. Um, 
the breakout rooms and polls will only work if you're using your paid for um, Zoom, which I'm not really sure how it costs because that's our IT team, IT team that does that. So I'm not um, not sure about the cost with that. And I think it's um, about fifteen pounds a month. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. it's not it's not expensive. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know if you get different ones, but but we we pay fifteen about 14 pounds something a month that's 14 39 i think Hang on, that's, that's it yeah well, so, yeah no, that, that's that's useful thank you so it's funny it's, thing it's, here, but it's similar to that, so. yeah it's, it's relatively relatively cheap to use and i think you can um if you're going to run a bigger event I think that's the £15 one is the first step. I think it's 100 people, up to 100 people. Zoom does have an add-on function where you can just add on maybe 500 people for a month or so. If you, so if you're needing more than 100 people at, at an event, then you can do an add-on as well. So it, it's got some really cool features. Um, disadvantage. The only one I can find is your free version is limited in what you can do and you're limited to 40 minutes on that. So you would have to pay for um, for Zoom, but, but, you know, which is totally fine because you expect to pay for these things anyway. Um, um, sorry, Claire, another disadvantage for Zoom is some organisations don't use it. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, so they don't have access. Absolutely. So a lo like a lot local authorities, um, the government, the um, I think they are just their IT servers just block block Zoom. I think it's just a bit nervous on the whole whether it there I think there is a, just a risk of um people hacking the systems and stuff. So the security risk there is is too much for them. So Microsoft Teams is one that most people can access. So local authorities will be able to use this as well. It's a it's a, I say a professional platform because it is used within within these authorities. Great now, Microsoft Teams has the use of breakout rooms, which they didn't um, at the start of last year. This is just a relatively new feature. Disadvantage to the breakout rooms part. So with Zoom, but Zoom's quite temperamental. Sometimes the co-host can manage and um, put people into breakout rooms. Whereas Microsoft Teams, that is not possible. It's only the person who creates the meeting that can um, manage the breakout rooms. I'd say you can't see as many people on the screen, um, even with large gallery, it does look a bit, bit strange. I think Zoom just looks a bit slicker with people appearing on the screen. Hopin, you might have heard of this platform. We used it for our annual uh, conference. And so I would only say using that if it is a kind of conference style event. It recreates a physical event quite well because you've got your networking area, you've got virtual marketplace, you've got breakout rooms, and you've got your main stage where the sort of plenary sessions take place. It is an expensive platform and the breakout sessions, so where you go into these breakout rooms as such, you can't, there's not really any interactive options in that platform. So you can't use like polls and stuff. So there are limitations to everything that we use, but for me, maybe being biased, Zoom is the definitely the best platform. So in terms of um, things like hosting information, so if you've got a training course where you want a mix of live sessions and self-study, then a couple of things that you can use, Google Classrooms to host materials, I mean, it's easy to set up and you can host a large number of information, but we've, we've found pitfall with it that because we set it up via personal Gmail accounts, then it's only, it will only accept a Gmail domain name. So it won't accept any other, any other um, email addresses. If you set it up with G Suite, then it's much easier, but that I believe that does cost. And not everyone is able to use Google Classrooms either. Microsoft Teams, you can create specific channels on that, which can host documents. And so that can be used to host materials. And it's a really good place to chat as well. It's not the best place for multiple people to complete activities. So whereas Google Classrooms, you can load things up and people can um, do, complete the activities and turn it in via Google Classrooms. It's not really that simple on Teams. Moodle, I would say, is the best platform. It's more professional. It's easy to use both with the person that sets it up and the user of the system. 
you can set up login details and password for the participants. So you just give them that information and they log in. It is expensive as well. And then just in terms of activities, just this is the last part of the, the presentation before I move you into breakout rooms. Uh, Jamboard as a platform um, that can be linked into Google Classrooms is a really good interactive activity option. So for example, we have a greenhouse gas matching activity that we used to run in physical sessions. So we'd split people into groups, we'd give them pictures of sources of gases and get them to match it to the uh, greenhouse gas that they think it emits. So we adapted that activity for online and used Jamboard to do this. So people can drag the images to the greenhouse gas, each person gets a copy and it's, it's a good way of bringing interactivity into your, se into your kind of self-study sessions. Microsoft Forms, we use that for um, like getting feedback from people or completing assessments. And the really good thing about that is people complete it. You can download all of that information into one Excel document and it's easy just to pick out the data from there. I can't think of any disadvantages of, of that form. Uh, we, we use it, we've used it well, and it's been really, really handy for us and saved us time with um, getting all the data together in one place. Okay, so what I'll do is I will um, stop sharing my screen just now before I explain the activities, resume the recording. Um, so yeah, all those that not sign up attending, uh, we have found that particularly today, as I mentioned, 30 people signing up, 10 of you here. Um, we found that in previous events as well. Um, so it's probably about a 30 to 40% dropout we've seen in our past events. I know one of my colleagues, um, Don, one of our development officers, um, decided to put an incentive to the training that they were running, the filmmaking training. And what they decided is if you attend all of these events, you will get, um, I can't remember what the incentive was, um, but they, they incentivize that. And I think he found um, a higher attendance rate from that. Um, sometimes online discussions have a more tendency to spiral out, spiral out of control. I have noticed um, this in the past. So setting clear expectations at the start, saying it's important that we do keep to time and that um, not monopolizing conversations and stuff. So if somebody does do that, if you're finding, right, we're starting to run out of time, and we're still on the one discussion just saying right we'll park that we'll come back to it um, participation also can be difficult as well so um, people might not always want to share because maybe it's a bigger a bigger audience uh, so maybe starting off your conversation sharing your own experiences and that helps people bring in um, some other experiences too but also um, in terms of participation being being difficult thinking about the number of people you have in a training setting as well so the less people you have say maybe between 10 and 15 is always going to be the ideal number um that might make people feel a little bit more confident in participating in the events and you'll always have technical you might always have face technical issues as well i did mention having a co-trainer as um, a backup but for the learner side they might be dipping in and out because of technology issues or might not be able to make the session. So can you record your sessions and then make them available to those that, that couldn't make the training? Those are all come, some of the challenges that we face. I know there's a whole lot more challenges and stuff, but these are, these are the main things faced. And it's very difficult maybe in an hour webinar session to talk about everything and bring every single experience into it. But we were just kind of sharing our, our, our top sort of tips on that. So I'll, I'll um, stop sharing my screen for the last time and um, check if you've got any questions or thoughts or comments. Um, we're, we're certainly here till, until 11 and I will stop sharing. I'll stop even, I'll stop the recording here. Um, <laughs>